This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. We're back. Maniscalco on the other end, now in a all me green guy, always oh, fashion. You're in it. You're in it with the fashion. I'm telling you, man. You never wear the same thing, bro. <sighs> nah, I don't know about that. I think I've worn this a couple of times on the cast. Let me just shout really? out right now yeah. to uh, wow. all the listeners out there coming into this cast limping. Uh, I've been on a three week run, uh, and I'm exhausted, man. I'm. I'm tired, uh, but it's not going to affect my performance here on the cast. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just saying, um, and I, I know you're, you're one of them. You're one of them. What? And this is, this is nothing against you. Oh, okay. But, but I'm house guest out. Wow. Well, <laughs> hey, well, you, it's, it's understandable that you should be. I've had three sets of house guests in the last three weeks. My sister-in-law, you, and now my mother-in-law and father-in-law, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mind it. I really don't. The house is big enough where you don't even know it. But as you well know, the standards that I have to give my guests takes a lot out of me, man. Right. And we had, a big, we had a big party yesterday. And I found out, not that I didn't know this before, but I found out what makes a great party. And it's not all the accoutrements. It's not what we had yesterday. It's not the food. It's not the drink. It's not the activities. You know what it is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> where, where, where do you think I'm going with this? On some vein of what I've been saying to you for the past five years. It's a company. It's always the company. It's always the company. It's the company. But I tell you, I tell you, and I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna pat my back here. <laughs> See this thing, that? Okay. Yeah. And this is goes out, to, and, and we're getting a lot of Patreon um, messages, and a lot of people are saying that this cast has helped them through life and we have given them nuggets of, of uh, advice that they yeah. are basing their entire life on. Here's another mm. one. Yeah. <laughs> At the party, because I went to a couple parties this weekend, right? I tell you the difference. I greet everybody that comes into my party, or at least I try to, mm -hmm. okay? So when they come in, thanks for coming, how you doing? I tell them, they got pizza over here, we got alcohol over here, we got bouncy house over there. I tell them, have a ball. My house is your house. Don't be afraid to have some fun. Go at it. Now, boom. It's all, they drop all their, their guard. And now they feel like they could just be themselves. And I got to tell you, I allow that. Do you what? <laughs> you love that? I allow that to happen. You <laughs> okay? I'm sorry. Bro, I'm sorry. I'm, I am I'm having a tough time seeing you right now as a friend and, a, and someone I do the cast with, uh, a co-host here. I'm seeing you as like a patient and I'm the doctor because I discovered something recently about you and I'm and I don't know if I should save a Patreon, but everything you're saying now. It's the opposite. It's the opposite, bro. You're scaring me to have to behave a certain way by greeting me at your door, telling me everything is open to me. I feel like it's a backhanded, you know, not a backhand. It's not the right word, but um, a test, a test. You know what I'm saying? I, it's, I, 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 you've taken this completely out of context, man. This is what I am telling the guests at my house is what everybody should be telling anybody who comes over to their home. Feel comfortable, allow yourself to have fun, but, and just 
let your hair down. That's basically what I'm telling these people. I know, but I'm not trying to disagree or cause fake tension here. What I'm saying is when you invite someone to your home, that's understood. So when you're repeating it at the, the, the gate, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily more comforting or a little more, whoa, all right. That was coming at I, me. You know what? You know what? I, I didn't. I didn't think I was gonna have to do this. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think I was gonna have to do this. But I'm gonna give you a, an example. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this part. And this this party definitely was a point of contention between Lana and I. We've had many arguments over it. It got out of hand, mm-hmm. and it's not only Lana's fault. It's my fault as well. But I'm going to tell the listeners what we had, and some of you are going to roll your eyes, and believe me, I don't blame you, but I made fun of people who had parties like this 10 years ago. I made fun of these people, right? Yeah. I worked I worked as a server at some of these parties on the way up, and I would go to other servers, can you believe this shit? Right? I did that. <laughs> right, right. Now I'm one of them. Right. Okay? Now. The, the creativity my wife has is so abundant that it, it, it comes out in different ways. She loves to throw a party. I love to throw a party. But her mind cannot stop when it comes to having a party. And I'll give you an example. We decided the theme was Christmas in California. Serafina loves Santa Claus, loves Christmas time. So we brought it back in April. And in doing so, we not only hired a Santa, by the way, I got to find out the cost on a Santa just just to give the the listeners, because this is off season for Santa. So, right, right? he's got to he's got to come in in April. And I got to tell you, the Santa we got, I thought I thought he came from the North Pole. Uh-huh. It almost made me believe there was a Santa Claus. Uh, listen, I won't go that far, but I saw the photo and I thought it was Richard Attenborough from fucking Miracle on 34th Street. The guy was perfect. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree. And your video that you sent me where you, you he sent me a video where you where you first showing me the Scrooge, I'm sorry, the Grinch. And then you show me the Santa, and after you show me each one, not loud enough for the guests or the Santa or Grinch to hear, but just for me in the video, you, you tell me what they are in an hour. That was fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> you know, hey, there's the Grinch. And hypothetically, $5 an hour. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell people what you really said. The Grinch, again, I, I borderline thought it might have been Jim Carrey. <clears throat> it was unbelievable. There's a story behind the Grinch that I'm going to get into. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, and by the way, to address address some of uh, our listeners out there, yeah. and I hate to keep bringing up Patreon, but I, I feel like a, a definite kinship with the people uh, that have signed up for Patreon. Some yeah. of the critiques, and not that we listen to critiques at all. We just do what the fuck we want here on the Pete and Sebastian <laughs> show. Right. But some of, some of the critiques are, oh, Sebastian's always telling his stories. We don't get it. We don't get a chance to hear Pete and tell his stories about what's going on with him, all right? right? Now, this just so happens that the way we're starting these shows off typically come off of a, an event or something that's going on here at the Maniscalco household, so we just jump into it from there. Now, if you want to hear Pete's stories, we hear you. We'll definitely get into that, but the beauty of the cast, really, is, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you almost being a, the listener and commenting on the absurdity that's that's going on over here? Am I am I right? Well, that's definitely a big chunk of the cast for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, there's no doubt about that. But um, yeah, when I when I have stories to tell, though, I've, I've you know, there's always a platform. I can always, I mean, obviously, feel like I can tell. I, I didn't, I didn't really think anything about it. I'm just saying we yeah. do hear. We do read our uh, our concerns here. Uh, we are like a high end restaurant. We do take uh, we do take complaints seriously here. Yeah, but you could talk all you want. We're gonna do what the fuck we want to do <clears throat> on the Pete and Sebastian show. So yeah, let, man. Let, let me hop right back into this. All right. We had a snow hill. Okay. Yeah. Now you ask what the hell a snow hill is. Well, 
basically we we recreated a sled run in my backyard uh three separate heights uh for people to go down you know little kids would go down the smaller one obviously and and bigger people would go down the bigger one now uh four tons of ice were brought in for this damn thing i showed my dad i showed my dad a video he he almost threw up in his mouth he said (laughs) he goes you bring in snow to your backyard and you're paying for it? He goes, I live I live in snow. Yeah. And I and I can't stand it. And you're paying for it to be in yeah. your yard? Yeah. You got prob you got problems. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I got that mentality in me too. Right? <clears throat> hmm So they're building this the they're building the snow hill. And uh an adult came up to me and said, because uh, I was going on, I was going to go, to go down the, the snow hill. He goes, could we go down the snow hill too? I said, everybody goes down the snow hill. And that guy dropped his and had a ball. That's what I'm saying. I make it comfortable for people to have a good time. He <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're laughing at. Uh, why, why are you getting so mad whether or not I'm laughing? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to have... Because the laugh, the laugh is not a normal laugh. It's like well, because a sinister... It's, none of this is... I'm waiting to, to, to say my part because this is... Well, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, first of all, just this little part there, that's very nice of you to... Oh, now look at you. Now you lean back. You're, pro- you're, you're like already <laughs> protesting. I mean, I, I wouldn't even want you as a, as a patient if I was a, a psychiatrist. I'd be like, I, I don't need the rocking back and forth. <laughs> Listen, I feel I saw the videos of the snow, okay? And I don't know if you're familiar with the term um, jumping the shark and what that means with the, with the happy days. You know, do you know about that? When they uh, say I've heard so- the term. I, I necessarily don't know the meaning. Well, like in Happy Days, there's an episode, one of my favorites personally, but where the Fonz is going to jump a shark. I don't know if you saw that. He's water skiing and he's got a leather oh, on, yeah, yeah. bathing yeah, suit yeah, yeah, yeah. with the leather, jumps the shark. Other guy chickened out. He didn't even have to jump it, but he still jumped it, right? And the TV world, they're like, when you get to that point where you're jumping sharks, you, you're done. And then it's kind of moved on to be like a term used all the time. And I feel like I, I saw the melting snow. Didn't work. And I, I, I think the melting snow in the grass was the, 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 the parties need to they need to go back to just being pools, floats and a barbecue. I, I think this is un, unsustainable and uh, I, there's nothing left to do. There's nothing left to do unless you're going to bungee you off the back of the cliff down to the uh, Melrose <laughs> Avenue. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean no? it didn't work? I, <clears throat> I can't. For the, I don't know what the price is. I saw the snow. I watched the video. It, it, it was like a, like a slide. It was a glorified slide. A couple slides could have, you know, it was with the hay that was brought in. It seems like it didn't. I mean, when you were telling me about it's like you were telling me about it and it, you said it had a curve and it came around. I, I was thinking luge. This was like, <laughs> the, the, you can admit that the thing might have not been great, guy. I mean, what are we doing here? Jeez. <laughs> Thank God when I face to face, I wouldn't say anything about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you got a point. You got a point. All right. I thought in my, my head. Yeah. That this was going to be a little bit more elevated experience where the hill was going to be a little bit higher. Right. 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 And there was going to be there was going to be some acceleration coming around the bend. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What drew me for the a loop was a lot of the hay and a lot of the snow, which you couldn't see in the video, was off to the side where they made like a play area where you could play in the snow. Now, I didn't know that that was even in the uh, the drawings. Mm-hmm. I thought that snow and that hay was going to be... So I do, I do agree with you. It wasn't as extravagant as I thought. 
However, this thing was a hit at the party. This yeah. thing was a hit at the party. I mean, these kids. I mean, for you and I, we go mm-hmm. down and it's like, all right. But you put a four year old on a on a on a raft or a tube down this thing, they think it's alpine. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you're also in California. Maybe some of them haven't even really been in snow much. Who knows? Yeah. But, but like, it was more expensive than the than the blow ups, right? Oh yeah, by far. I mean, it, uh, the 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 value of of what we got versus the cost didn't match. I mean, for the amount of money we paid for that, it should have been a lot more of a a wow factor, which it was. But you're right. And I told Lana this, we are downsizing our parties because it becomes, you know, it becomes how we're going to top the next one, right? Right. Or the last one. Right. And we're not doing that. Crusoe's parties in June, it's just going to be food, a blow up house and run around the yard. And, and that's the end of that. This was, this was a little, this was, this got out of hand and, and I'm aware of it and we're pulling back the, the drape a little bit next time around but let me get to the Grinch all right the Grinch walked in and I gotta tell you I looked at this his mask and I'm like looks like a this this Grinch looks like he got his mask off uh, like an Amazon it didn't look like a really well put together mask right, right. yeah but the, the the whole outfit was beautiful and this guy was huge tall the Grinch the Grinch was six, uh, I'd say six, five. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Like like, we had the Michael Jordan, the Grinch. He looked tall. I didn't see the face that well. By the way, I feel like I shouldn't have said anything about the snow because I want to go to the 50 slash 40 double birthday party. Well, you're out. <laughs> 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 I knew it. I knew. It. I knew there was tension. I knew there was tension because I didn't say you made Lake Placid in your backyard. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no! Right. The, yeah, the so, Grinch looked great. I didn't see the face, but he was tall and skinny too. He seemed to be like really Grinchy. The guy was enormous. Yeah. Now. The Grinch is coming up to me. He's giving me fist pumps like this. And he's like, what's up? What's up, man? What's up? And I'm like, Grinch talks? Like, right. part of the, the thing is you don't talk. You know, the guy's talking? Right. Uh, and then he's like, come on, let's go down the slide. Let's just go down the slide. So I'm like, all right. So me and the Grinch, he goes down his thing. I go down mine. And we come to the thing. We're bringing up the rafts or whatnot. Then I go get a piece of pizza, and this guy's following me. I'm like, what's going on? So I get the pizza, and I left my drink over by the slide, so I went to go get my drink, and this guy's still following me. So I'm thinking, oh, no. He's a fan? And he, th- and he, he thinks we're going to hang out? I'm like, hey, I ain't going to do this the whole party. So... He's like, let's take a picture, man. Let's take a picture. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. So we go to take a picture. Well, now, this who, is about- whose camera? Is the Grinch's camera or your camera? We had a photographer. All right, all right, cool. So this is 45 minutes into the party, by the way. He's been there for 45 minutes. And, and just now I, I notice he's really kind of hanging on to me. And he goes, let me take my mask off for the photo. And I'm what? thinking, you know, I don't take your mask off. There's kids around. <laughs> he takes his mask off, and I kind of glance up, and I go, that looks like my trainer. And I do another glance. Lana and him devised this whole plan where he was going to be the Grinch and then didn't tell me he was going to be the Grinch, right? Oh, nice, man. Because they were talking last time, he goes, oh, I should have dressed as the Easter bunny for your, like, for your Easter, you know. She goes, oh, you could be the Grinch at the at the Serafina's party. So this guy was nice enough to dress up as the Grinch. And I got to tell you, he's the best Grinch I've ever seen in my life. The whole party adored him. This guy never, this guy was yeah. never, this guy's, this guy's a trainer. Uh, right, this guy's, right. This guy's, this guy's jacked, right? Right, right. Well. It's, a, it's fascinating because I feel like 
he, he's doing it for, when you're doing it for that reason, it's way different than doing it for, like, I think I was telling you, on, on, when I stayed at the hotel, I woke up in L.A. and Santa Monica, the Oceana, nice hotel. We wake up the Easter morning and they had a guy, Easter Bunny. You know, and he was really good, but and, and the kids loved him, and he even had his own little east of uh, his bunny with him that you could pet. I'm just looking, I'm looking for the not being into it, you know what I mean? And then when it was all over, we were on our way to you guys now. We're in the hotel lobby, and the guy's helping us wheel our bags out. East of Bunny was across the street. Still in costume, had to put feed the meter, and he was doing a light jog back over to the hotel. Still in costume. I, and, I mean, and I can't, I couldn't decide if he's underneath that gum, sweating my balls off, fucking feeding the meter. What am I doing, man? I'm supposed to be doing uh, movies right now. Or, you know, like, like your guy, he knows, hey, I'm never wearing this thing again, man. This is just a one-time fun thing. So, you know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I often wonder how they feel underneath the mask. Okay, you make a good point. I think since this was a one-off for him, he played it to the best of his ability. Now, if he has to do this week in, week out, I just start to think, you know, the, the mask starts to get old. It starts to, like, maybe rip. Maybe it's rubbing against his cheek now, you know? Maybe we, <laughs> totally. We, <laughs> he throws his back out. He can't train anymore. And then someone goes, I was at the party where you were the Grinch. You were fantastic. I can hire you out, right? Now he's into week three. The Grinch smells like <laughs> weed because he's doing one hits before he fucking goes in there. That's different. It's not just, he don't wash it like you said, man. It's like, come on. <laughs> you know? I I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to, if you're like, let's say somebody's going to dress up as Santa Claus right, for right. Christmas in your family. I think they're going to go balls to the wall and give it all they got as exactly. a Santa Claus for, for a couple hours. But when you're doing this shit week in, week out, you got to think three, four months into this, you're going, oh, God, I got to put this damn thing out again. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> When I, I used to do Santa for my niece and nephew and then for Sadie when she was little. I, at some point on Christmas I'd, Eve, I'd leave the room because we'd be together as a family. And my brother and, my, and Jackie would help me throw it all on in the garage. And then I would do a run by the lawn with the flashlight. And my brother would go, what, is that? What the hell? Did you guys see that? And then I'd come around. They were so young. I'd come in. Oh, 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 oh a blast. guy. Because I knew I wasn't getting in a car and going to a mall in, in a little while, and like, <laughs> like, and then I was thinking too with the Easter money who did our thing on um, Easter morning. The costume was really nice, right? I'm figuring at least five hundred bucks for the costume, right? Yeah. How you you only work on Easter in that costume, right? It's like Santa. You can hire him all year round. People use him for different things. I can't think of another time you would use the Easter bunny than Easter. So it would take like four Easter's just to pay the stupid bunny or outfit off, right? I know, I know. Well, yeah, you could be the Easter bunny at a mall, but you're right. The Easter bunny's oh, not getting well. hired in like December, right? I mean, that's right. yeah, November. He's not getting hired then. I didn't even Boy. think of the mall. That's right. You do. But, like, you know, even then, who's yeah. going to see that COVID bunny at the mall, you know? Yeah. yeah no, nah, I mean. <laughs> Whoa. If, sorry. If you look at the difference between Santa's display and the Easter display at the mall, it's it's night and day. You know, the, the whole budget goes into Santa's, Santa's display at the mall. And whatever they got left right. over... They go, hey, give the Easter Bunny a chair and a basket. Now, if you're a Jewish kid growing up, my two best buds were Jewish. Everything you just said, though, the, the bunny, the half-ass bunny, which is true, and the, and the thing just means nothing. Just just walk by and nothing. You know what I'm saying? What do you, what do you, what do you mean, walk by oh, what? Because they're both Catholic, right? Kind of like, I mean, well, the Easter Bunny... Right? Isn't that like because yeah, we're doing? Yeah, well, yeah, it's not. It, it's a, it's a Catholic leaning holiday. 
And it's not like a single time the mall does anything Jew for Jewish people. Like, yeah, you know, like nothing to visit, nothing to sit on the lap of, and nothing, nothing. They, we're the only religion that does that fun shit. I don't even get that. <laughs> no, well, the, the Jews are, are busy starting businesses, <laughs> and, and, and we're and we're sitting on the Easter Bunny's lap <laughs> asking for. Asking where the fuck the eggs are at. Come on. <laughs> We're so pathetic. We couldn't go a whole year for next Christmas. We needed something to break it up halfway through the year. Like, we need a bunny or some shit. What do we got? By the way, Easter morning, we wake up at the hotel, right? And Jackie says to Sadie, listen, uh, and this is how she does it, too. Um, I think you know, but there's no Easter bunny, right? You know that. And, and, and Sadie's like, yeah, I kind of figured it was you guys and Jackie's like yeah it is so I didn't do a basket because we're on vacation stuff but I hit a bunch of candy all over the hotel room right so um Sadie's like all right you know and she starts to look at it and then I go say you, you're cool with that right you're cool with that and she goes yeah no this is I just want the candy dad and then she looks at me bro in a total seriousness she goes but I mean you know dad it's like you know th there is a Santa Claus though we know that so that's all that matters and I'm like oh yeah oh yeah holy shit <laughs> I mean oh, can you imagine bro to be like that night, like I was thinking about maybe she's old enough to watch herself when you go out to dinner. Holy fuck, was I wrong? <laughs> there's no Easter Bunny, but there's a Santa Claus, Dad. Come on, use your head, Dad. <laughs> you, think, you think she would hear that and go, okay, there's no Easter Bunny. We gotta be no Santa, right? <laughs> right, right. But, right. but that, that's, that's how powerful Santa is. Yes. Is is like this guy? There's, there's there's gotta be a Santa Claus, right? Right. But, but here's my here's my question. Do you think do you think Sadie comes over to our house on on Easter, and she's looking at Seraphina and Caruso, and, and you know they still believe in the Easter Bunny? Do you think she's looking at them now, going, guys? Come on, you, I, you can't I, figure this out. I was I was looking for that. No, but I think it's more like. When we graduated college and the first year I paid taxes, I was like, what the fuck? You look back on when you, you know, I think Sadie's looking back on, oh, man, I wish I still thought that shit was real. Those were good times. Those were good times. You know what I'm saying? You're growing, oh, growing up time now, man. Shit, so, man. I got to tell you, too, man, as far as vacation goes, and I may have said some of these to the listeners before, just little tips that... People think when you go on vacation, you just go and you relax. No, your family does. But as a man, you're always watching. And I may have told you this. I think I did at your house. But first day we get to the hotel about 1.30 in the afternoon. Small, beautiful, small pool. Um, but I notice half of it is in shade. And you know California, especially this time of year. In the sun, burning up. In the shade, I swear to God, I could use a windbreaker, right? Yeah. So I make note of that, and I tell Jackie, listen, we got to get, that's the one right there. Those two last chase lounges, they go to about 445. You're still getting sun on those two puppies, right? So the next morning, I come out. I'm the first one out at 9 o'clock, and I sit in the chase lounge chair because I'm not going to do a, a book or any of that shit. I physically yeah. sit. I physically sit. I said to Sadie and Jackie, go do what you're doing. Come back. We'll take turns sitting in. I was like fucking first in line for concert tickets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but then I started seeing people come out of their room and, the, and they go and they go and they sit in those Chase Lounge chairs that by noon are shady. But now they're getting good sun, better sun than me. And they're sitting in there and they're getting all cozy. And I'm like, that's because you didn't do your fucking homework. You didn't look at the pool. Yeah, bro. By noon, my wife, my daughter, they need sunscreen. We're laying out, playing. These people are using three and four towels wrapped around their legs up to their neck like this. They go, you want to go for a bike ride? Fuck that, you know? Your whole, your whole day is shot because you didn't make that mental note. I can't help you. I, I, see, this is the beauty of having this type of mind. It's almost, it's a blessing and a curse. It is. Because you literally scan the hotel pool for active sunlight no one's doing this man no no one's looking at the pool going 445 those chairs are not really usable and then 
authentic. And where's my room? I got to unpack. You're scanning stuff. Right. And setting your family up for a layup. Boom. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You're. We're going to use bikes. They say they got free bikes, right? I called down and I'm like, I'm going to need bikes for tomorrow. Do I have to should I rent them? Well, no, they're free. I go, they're available. Uh, yeah, no, we have plenty of bikes. I was like, S- you know, S- there's going to be a rush. I know you got a lot of people here. And she goes, sir, we have plenty of bikes. And I'm like, okay. So I know that's set, right? Then I'm thinking to myself, what the? I go back down with Sadie. I go, can you uh, pull out one of your bikes? I'm going to use it tomorrow, but I want to check with her, right? So we put it on her. It's a little too high. He goes, we'll do it. A seat adjustment, blah, blah, blah. And we get it just right. Boom. Put it aside. So tomorrow when we go biking, everyone's not sitting out on the hot sidewalk. Oh, and her feet don't touch the ground. What are we uh, taken care of? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but again, this is why a vacation, and I'm not just saying, you know, this is a, a male thing. You know, females are piped into this this mindset uh, too. Yeah, absolutely. But who but whoever's doing that in the relationship is not having a good time. <laughs> because, because, right? No, because that yeah. you're constantly thinking how to maneuver throughout the entire vacation so it goes smooth. Right? That's, I mean, a, why, that's why I love a Mexican beach resort. It's just all right here. There's no fighting for nothing. There's the bar for the drinks. There's the ocean. There's the pool. Have that. When you're moving and shaking all day long in these kind of vacations, I mean, just taking the shuttle. I, I, again, taking the shuttle from LAX to the rental car. The shuttle pulls up, okay? First of all, I go to Jackie. These shuttles uh, don't run that often. It drives me nuts to get from the hotel uh, airport to the rental place i'm gonna go stand uh no i go you go stand out by where the shuttles come if a shuttle comes before the bags you get on that shuttle take it to the shuttle place get in line for the rental car i'll come on the back end with the bags she goes there calls me uh it didn't come yet so we go over as we're getting there now the shuttle's coming we get on we're like second or third on Again, Sadie and Jackie are getting ready to go all the way to the back. I go, no, 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 right here, right here, right here, because when they let you out, the door opens here. Now, we're the first ones off. And there we are. Now we're in line in the shuttle. We're first in line in the shuttle. I turn around and go, guys, look behind you. A line of people, they both go, oh, yeah, oh, no. Hey, oh, yeah, no, I just saved us an hour. You ever rent a car? I could fucking buy it in less time. I've said that before, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> But what I'm saying is this type of brain power, yeah. right, is exhausting <laughs> because you're, 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 constantly, you're constantly thinking on easy ways to move from point A to point B. I'll give you another example. And here, guys, write this down in your notebook. When the bellman comes to pick up my luggage mm-hmm. or if he's if, – if, let's say if he's picking me up at my house – I put the luggage out on the driveway the way it should be fucking packed in the car. It, it goes it goes from big to small. So the guy doesn't have to go, okay, where's the big one? I go, just pack it the way it's in the line. I line up the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then my wife wants to know why, why I'm so angry on the way to or where I because the brain isn't work. It's been working. It's been going. That's why. <laughs> oh my god! I tried to. Well, I was at your house. I tried to check in JetBlue the night before, and they're not let me. And they go, "Go see the crew member at the desk." Right. So now I go to Jackie. We're leaving at 7 instead of 7.30. And she's like, why? And I go, because it's time we got to see him at the desk. And she's like, so? Maybe that. I go, no, no, no. You, you don't need to. When then when you can't automatically check in, they need to tell you something face to face. That's what's going through. My, I barely got any sleep that night, bro. And then I get there and I check in and the, and the lady's taking a little time. And I go to Jackie. She's, re, she's rerouting us. She's rerouting us. <laughs> right. Jackie goes, God, you have that fucking Dilma Globe. And then the little woman goes, boom, and she checks us in. So I turn to the woman and I go, you know why, any chance why I couldn't check in online? And she's like, oh, no, it's just sometimes it does that. I, you know, there's no explanation. And I tried calling, but they, you know, I was on hold forever. 
So they don't understand. I want to say to that lady, I, I didn't sleep last night, lady, because I thought I wasn't on this flight. You know what I'm saying? And you're telling me, oh, it's just the fucking Delta, baby. Go Delta. That's what I'm saying, bro. We we put all this stuff in our head and you're not getting sleep because you're thinking you're going to go to Singapore and then back to Fredonia. You know, like Dude. this is what's going through your head the whole time. Yeah. I wish I could turn it off. I wish <laughs> I wish I could turn this part of my brain right. off because, again, it causes a lot of stress for me. And yeah. when, when, when Lana or the kids don't see why I'm doing something, it gets I get aggravated because just like you, you're like, look at how much time I saved us because we sat in the front of the bus because I don't know. You think this is because we travel a lot? We've just seen it all. Um, I, maybe, maybe repetition, maybe. But I feel like I feel like that happened to me once, and I made a mental note. I'm like, ah, shit, I'm stuffed in the back. Don't ever go in the back of the bus. What are you, a school bus? Stay up front. And, like, yeah. and, and now it's yeah. locked in. I gotta say what you're saying too, though. Like, it's less stressful when I travel alone because I, I you know what I equate it to? Like, if I was a soldier in a war. And I got to get an injured guy out on my back. Oh, yeah, it's going <laughs> to fucking take forever. When I'm alone, I could be out of this woods in a half hour with fucking Johnny on my shoulder. Oh, God, here we go. We're going to have to rest. I got to explain everything, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm so good. Let me tell you my closing move after this one-week extravaganza vacation in California. We land in Buffalo. I turned to Jackie. Yeah, I go, this airport, it, it was late at night. We're the only plane. And I go, this, this place is so slow bringing your luggage out. I'm going to go get the uh, shuttle uh, to the parking spot. to, buff, to uh, I'm going to go get into parking in the shuttle. Everyone on the plane is going to go with you to get the bags. I'm going to get on there and see if I can get the car. And by the time I get... And I literally we get off at the tunnel and I do a light jog a lot. And Jackie's like, go ahead, go ahead. Don't worry. Go. And I do a light. jog. I, I get up to the parking spot van. It's completely dark. The dude who's driving it is sleeping in the back because he's still not expecting anyone for another 20 minutes. It's small Buffalo airport. I do a light knock on the window. He turns everything on, drives me to get my car. You know, I give him a little tip. I get in my car. I pull up. Jackie's coming out with the bags. Everybody else is coming out, wheeling them to the fucking van. Oh, God, we're done. My family didn't even have to get on the shitty van and take that last brutal shuttle ride. Because I'm never stop. You never stop. That's it. it never stops. It's almost the way you travel and the way I travel is you're never stagnant. You're constantly moving. The only time you are stagnant is when you're on the airplane. Other than that, it's like, boom, we're up. Boom. We're running. We're moving. Yeah. Slight jog. This, that. We're in line. That, that, that. I, you know, another thing. It's just like having out your license in the line. Whatever you need to right. show the person when right. you get there, right. whether it be a confirmation number, the whole thing. I get up to the line. There's no like looking for it when I'm there. It's pa boom on the desk. Hey, oh my god, is it? It's organized. Oh, nice. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> I do the double. I put the license with the credit card and just give it all at once. Even though they're only asking for the credit card, I know you're gonna want the license. Let's save the double ask. Let's save it. How about you? <laughs> By the way, Jackie did something. We got a little tiff in the hotel. Not a big thing, but uh, can't help white trashing it up. Jackie, it, this, this hotel, you can look up the Oceana if you're not familiar with it. It's a nice hotel. She puts our own, she puts milk and, and some sodas in the wet bar, right, with their stuff, right, because there's oh, no okay. fridge. So she's yeah, kind of moving yeah. this stuff around. So then at night, Sadie's sleeping in the room, in the living room. We're in the bedroom, but the fridge is in the living room. Jackie goes in there to open it up to get out the milk. And then she knocks over one of the bottles from the wet bar and it smashes and there's beer all on the carpet. So now she's getting towels and she's soaking out the beer from the carpet, picking up the glass. And I'm like, 
it's, Jack, it's just, you know, it's white trash putting your milk in fucking in the wet bar thing. And she's like, oh, is it Pete? Is it Pete? And then she looks at me and she goes, well, I guess I'm white trash then. I guess I'm white trash, you know? So it's like, I mean, you know, you got to. And then here's the tip. The next day when we're checking out, the guy goes, uh, I go, did you get breakfast? We had breakfast this morning. He's like, oh, yeah, that's on here too. No problem. And then um, he goes, anything from the wet bar? And then I go, well, one, and I'm about to say one beer. And Jackie goes, well, one beer, but I, I broke it accidentally. And I go, yeah, and I go, yeah but it, it, it's cool. And he goes, I don't know. If you broke it accidentally, I won't charge you for it. And Jackie's like, what's your problem? I mean, that's what happened. I go, you, you sound like you're trying to get out of a fucking beer. Just pay for the beer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you feel that way? <laughs> Even though it's yeah, the truth. <laughs> but you're, you're actually, here's another thing. That's how the brain is working on your end. That's why. That's why, again, we're so exhausted. You're thinking that the guy is thinking, oh, mm. Mm, trying to scam. Out of it. He might not even be thinking that, but you're like, just in case he is, yes. he got it covered. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't want, oh, we had a wonderful stay. They called me Mr. Corielli the whole time, the whole thing. I don't, I don't want to be walking out and have him turn to his co colleague and go, did you, see, did, you see, did you hear that move to get out of the beer? I mean, if you can't afford yeah. the $11 beer, don't get the beer. You know? it's like, yeah, it's... But I doubt that was happening. Great trip, but, though, out there. Um, I yeah, got to say. By the, yeah. by, by the way, I hate to cut you off. The, the entire trip from soup to nuts is on the Patreon platform. Yes. So... If you guys are wondering why we're not talking about it, we already discussed yeah, it on my Patreon. This is not a plug for Patreon. This is just telling you guys. That's where that whole thing is living. And you'll see video of Pete making a pizza. We're posting that shortly. And just some some behind-the-scenes footage of Pete and I on the, up on the Patreon. Awesome. So that's, that's where that is. Yeah, we discussed the whole stay at your place. The one thing we didn't bring up there that I had to ask and had to wait a week because now... You know, yeah. so someone was in there cleaning. Any comment about how spotless we left the guest house when we left? <laughs> so, I ask the, the housekeeper after everybody's stay. Mm -hmm. Including, including my own, on my own family. Right. I'm proud to say that your cleanliness has set the standard for people staying. Beautiful. Because, because I, because I asked the housekeeper as soon as I walk in as she's cleaning. Yeah. This is I say this with everybody. I go slobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 clean, clean. <laughs> Jackie's gonna be happy to hear that, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, emptied oh, yeah. the garbage cans, had it all tied up in one garbage, towels in the hamper, wiped out. Nice. I saw it, bro. I walked in before the housekeeper. I do I do a one a once around just to see what's going on. And then what do you call Lana in the kitchen and say you could release dead deposit? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I, I got something here I want I want to get into. <laughs> yeah. So I got my in-laws staying with me, right? They're easy guests. You know, they, they don't need a lot. But I got to tell you, Caruso was acting up in the morning, right? And we were talking earlier about, you know, discipline and trying to get our kids on the right track in regards to, like, you know, just setting some structure. Yeah. But I want to I ask you this. If you've ever had either your in-laws or your parents or anybody in your family, for that matter, do this. So he didn't want to put his shoes on this morning, and he, 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 he cries, right? And they were, like, hovering. 
So I call it in-law audience where, where, where they're like watching me try and like get his shoes on. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I don't do well with this. Right, right. I don't do well with like people like standing over me going, oh, let me see what he's going to do. Now. You know, like like they're, like they're watching TV. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I yeah. was like, I, I just took him in the car. I had to get out of there. I, I didn't like the, the hovering. Well, it's that's it's it's it depends when it's my in-laws side. It's uh, it's tough because, you know, it's my in-laws, you know, but if it was, you know, like now if it was my mom or something, I, and say anything, I'll just grab her and pull her aside. And, and just when I grab her and start to pull her aside, she'd go, I'll put him on, I'll put him on. She, Cause she knows the minute we're alone, it's not going to be pretty. And that's exactly like, that's when you, 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 you're, you're hamstrung when it's happening in front of your in-laws, you can't be overly aggressive. It's the in-laws, man. But if it was happening yeah. in front of your dad, you'd be like, I got a pull. Right. It's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like I couldn't discipline the way I wanted to right. because I thought they were going to go, Ooh, Oh, that's a little harsh. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. if it's my, and he mom knows that there he already me, knows that. Caruso already yeah, knows yeah, that. Knows That's that. why they're, I gotta put my shoes right, on. You know. I'm a grandma and grandpa. You, you, you take a walk, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Your powers are weak here, guy. <clears throat> but if it was my mom watching me, I would tell her, take a walk, ma. You know, like, like yeah. I could tell my ma that. I can't right. tell my in laws that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. I can't tell my get, get out of the room. You're making me nervous. <clears throat> you know right. what I'm saying? Now, does, now the thing is, like Jackie would be the one to discipline hard, more hardcore in front of her family, but what does Lana? If that doesn't happen, is Lana more like he's not feeling it with his shoes right now? That's fine. Or does she ever like? Do they? Does she lay down the gauntlet with them too? The gauntlet's coming from me. Uh, Lana lost a, a little bit a couple days ago. She raised her voice, which I never really heard. Wow, nice. Yeah, she. Yeah, which I was like, that finally. You know, it probably finally. had some impact. That'd be like Seinfeld saying "motherfucker" on stage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It definitely, it definitely set the standard. Uh, well, but now we know what it sounds like when mommy's mad, and it took five years to hear it. But yeah, she uh, she finally let loose. So what do you do uh, though? Do you, do, you, do you pull them? Do you do you pull them aside? And do you, like, or do you like? You know what doesn't seem to work is the threat of later when we're alone, you're going to feel you're going to be in trouble, right? I've tried that. And then I see her go play, and I'm like, she's not even worried about later. Look at her hopping around and shit. <laughs> like this, you know, I wouldn't even be able to have a good time. <laughs> I know. Uh, what I found during the crying fits, I just picked them up while he's crying. I act like he's not even crying. I bring him to the car. I put him in his car seat, still crying. I buckle him up, and then I change the subject. Then I go, look at the bird or something, and maybe maybe he looks at it. Maybe he doesn't, right. but it's a technique right. where he ain't going to stop crying. Just go plow through your day. And yeah, It's hard to hear the crying, but locked him in, got mm -hmm. in the car. Next thing you know, we start talking, he forgets all about it, and we're off to school. Uh, I just, I don't, I, I need the discipline without an audience. <laughs> and, it doesn't, and it doesn't mean I'm going to hit the kid. It could mean, like, it could mean where I go, because he, he has, you know, he's walking around now with an inner tube, like this little inner tube that he blows. Like, it, it's like a floaty for the pool. That he that he blows up every once in a while, but he's he, he, that's just it. So I think I go, I'll take I'll take the floaty, if you don't stop crying, and then I get like a, <laughs> you know, like he, right. he tries to stop because he know he knows I'm gonna take the toy away. I Is say, it like I'm a little balloon? Much. I think Sadie has one now. You blow it up, and then slowly the air comes out of it, and you just blow it up again. And yeah, it's like an inner tube. It's like an inner tube for the pool, but made for a kid. Yeah. So, so, do you, and what about the pop-ups? You see the pop-ups where they just press them like dots? They push them? Yeah, yeah. What, what the? There's a guy with a house in the Hamptons because of that shit. I, I don't even get it. It's The guy who invented how, it has how? to be like, I don't even fucking know. What is the fucking... 
I know it, it. It's it's such a simple thing. Yeah. Which is which is crazy to me because they love the iPad, right? If they ever get like a hold of an iPad and want to, you know, that, that's so much stimulation. Yet they still like to pop the things. Right. I mean, what is that? Well, I mean, like you ever have like when your kid was younger and you get the bubble wrap from a package and sometimes yeah, the kids like to pop thing. it. I think that's like someone saw that and goes, why don't we just sell that shit, basically? Yeah. I, uh, and yeah. then, oh my God, you know, I don't know. You never know. You never know. You know what I'm saying? I know. It's crazy what, what they gravitate towards. But, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm on wit's end here. I'm just, it's just a, just a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted from hosting, man. Yeah, really it's, it's, it's it's exhausting, dude. It's even <clears throat> even if you didn't apply that kind of service that you apply, just you know, it's just knowing people are there. It's like it's it's you're on. You're always on. Always on. Always on. And I don't know. I, I gotta I gotta tell you what happened to me, and I don't know what's going on. I was taking a flight to Las Vegas this past weekend for a corporate gig. Okay. Okay. So I flew on on a Wednesday. The thing was on a Thursday. It was during the day. And then I was going to fly back right after the gig on a Thursday. So I flew commercial. And I go up to check in, you know, like to scan your ticket when you're going to go on the plane. Yeah. And it came up invalid tickets. The first time it's ever happened to me. Right? Huh. And, like, and they look at the ticket. They're like, oh, no, no, no. You're not the 4 o'clock. You're the 625. I go, what? 625? So I had to go back to the, to the thing. Wait in line so they could change it. And as I'm waiting in line, the girl at the ticket, she calls me over. She goes, I, I figured it out here scans it and I walk in I sit down at my seat on the plane I look at my ticket I was using the ticket for the day before his flight like I was using the LA to Vegas not the Vegas to LA and I'm like am I turning into that guy you know like right, right. if that was if I was in line right. and yeah, if I was yeah. watching this. I'd yeah. go what the fucking guy. I don't even have the right <laughs> well, thing. I, I think there's a bigger thing I'm seeing here, bro. And it's not even with you. It's with the with the service level that's going on in this country. You can't deduce when you're given a ticket from Vegas to L.A. that maybe the guy gave you the wrong one. I mean, he he's got to go all the way over and start waiting online. Before you go, oh wait, maybe yeah. I, I find that hard to believe that 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 she couldn't figure that out when you're standing right there. I I'm upset that I couldn't figure it out. Okay. I mean, you, I'm I'm upset that I got the wrong ticket. Then I gave it to her, and then she looked at it. She didn't even put it together. You're right. She didn't even put it together. Somewhere. That I had to go back, and then she called me over. Huh. Here's another one. Huh. I'm in the lobby waiting or whatever i'm at the gate waiting to get on the plane guy walks in starts freaking out i start swearing loud motherfuck you're so funny you had a, i love you oh, oh. i'm like uh, oh no how am i gonna deal with this right now i'm looking at the guy he's on something something's off he's either drunk or he's high something's going on can i take an instagram i, I, I thought we we're gonna take a photo He's got his video on Instagram. Now it's like a live oh, feed that we're yeah, doing. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, hey, it's just Sebastian. That's how I come in on the camera and give a look or whatever. And then I walk away. And then he sits right by me. And then he goes, can I talk to you? Now, I know if he's going to start talking to me, this is gonna, this is not going to go. I go, I got to call my wife. So I'm on, a, I'm on a fake phone call. <laughs> During the fake phone call, Someone from the airline comes over to me and goes, sir, do you want to go in our private room? Right? Here's my thing. I said, still on the fake phone call, because the guy is there. I go, could you put him in the private room? Why do I got 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, look at, I look at the private room as jail, right? Like, we're all amongst ourselves. And if you act up, you get locked up. Why do I got to go in the private room? Is this on Why'd the plane? The no, this is at the gate before we get on the plane. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. But there's, there's, I didn't there's even a, know there was a, a very private small room. airline. What? Well, there, there. Well, in this particular case, this is this is a, a, a God, what's the name of this uh, airline called? It's called like JetX or Jet something. It's it's. I'm surprised. I don't even want to mention it because it's not crowded at all. It's a commercial <laughs> airline, <laughs> right? That has nobody on it. That takes off out of Burbank, and you literally check in. And you go right to the hangar. The the plane is right there. It's like outdoor. Everything's outdoor. Oh, you're, you're 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 hanging out in the hangar, <laughs> and then you just walk on the plane. It's wow. beautiful. Wow! Nobody's there. Oh my god! And in Las Vegas, you don't hang out in the hangar. You hang out in this like area, and so they put me in a private room, right? <laughs> yeah. Now we go to the. We get to go on the plane. I'm fearing that this guy's going to sit next to me. That's all we need, right? Right, right. So I sit down. He walks past me. Thank God. I get off. I get out, and I didn't see him the, the rest of the time. But private room, I'm sorry. If you're acting up, you're the person that's got to leave, no? Is there any amenities to the private room? Was it, like, nice? No, pri or private it... room? No. It's, a sh it's, just like a, it's got a couch in there. It's yeah. a room. Looks right. like, it looks like a cell. It's a cell. Right. It's a cell. <laughs> right, man. That's the price, baby. That's the price. Oh, man, wow. Price, man. <laughs> man, so, so, my, when so I flew, um, I flew at, when I left you guys, the day we flew was the first day you didn't have to wear a mask on the plane. And first of all, I couldn't believe how many people still wore them. Like, Wow. But I yeah. thought I thought this was a classy move, and I don't know if you've ever seen this, and I think this is why it happened. But I've never seen it before. Our pilot came before the plane left the gate, and we're all on it. He did a walk down the aisle all the way through the plane, and he no clapping, but just going, "We're gonna have a good flight. We're gonna have a nice flight. It should be smooth up there. We're gonna have a good flight. Everybody ready? We're gonna have a nice flight." And he went back and forth. And I said to Jackie, shit, I've never seen a pilot do a walk through the aisle, like a coach in a locker room. And then I thought about it more, and I'm like, wait a second. I think that was his way of saying, get your masks off. Step up, people. We're fine. Look at me. Look at me. He was like walking down a runway, you know, like, uh, like a model going up and down. That's what he was doing, showing us to take them off. I liked it. <laughs> I, again, though, the brain power it takes for you to even process that, like no one, no one, everybody else is probably sitting there going, oh, yeah. that was nice. He came down. You're sitting there going, why is this happening? What's going on? What's the motive behind this? Yeah, it's unbelievable. No one's piecing any of that shit together. Oh, shit. This thing, this thing fucking snapped off again. This is unbelievable. It's, it's OK. We got it. We got it all here. All right. Um, all right. Listen. Again, listeners, got to thank you for listening to the Pete and Sebastian Always. show. Uh, Patreon is humming. People are loving what we're doing over there. I'm just saying it's offered, not required. It's just a little extra piece that we're providing for the Pete and Sebastian show listeners. Some great messages that we really got to get into on the next Patreon about these people that are uh, emailing us. This is a heartbreaking story that we got to get into. But All right. We'll yeah, let's tackle later. some of it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. The Pete and Sebastian Show. We will see you next week. Guys, just want to let you know, dates just added. Um, doing West Palm Improv in West Palm, Florida, Thursday, May 12th. Friday, May, May 13th, and Saturday, May 14th. I know it's kind of last minute. just came up. West Palm, Florida, improv, baby. So hope to see you in May, Floridians. 